The Neolithic wonder in southern England, known as Stonehenge, has puzzled historians, archaeologists, and curious tourists for centuries. Answers to basis questions surrounding the iconic monument have been elusive, including how it was built and why. And where did the towering sandstone boulders come from? Now, on that last question, the origin of the stones may finally have been solved. Ian Lee shows us the breakthrough with an American connection. A layer of mystery is peeled back at Stonehenge, exposing the unknown to the light. A year ago, okay. here it is. a seemingly unremarkable rod of rock returned to the historical site. So Back then, the Susan Greeny saw pieces, something so. different. So for geologists, this is um, the Holy Grail, really, for Stonehenge. Did it turn out to be the Holy Grail? Well, in some ways, yes. Um, it's enabled uh, some analysis that wouldn't have otherwise been able to take place and finally pinpoint exactly where the sarsen stones came from. It's a, a but that of chunk of rock initially disappeared. In 1958, the British government commissioned a major restoration project to make Stonehenge safer and to help historians better understand the monument. Workers drilled through the largest of the sarsen rocks, removing three stone cores. Robert Phillips took one home. The rest were discarded. So if so much could be determined from a small sample, you'd be forgiven for asking why another wasn't taken. Well, Stonehenge is completely unique. It's um, the only lintelled stone circle in the world, and it's four and a half thousand years old. We don't really want to be taking bits of it away. You can see quite clearly the... Uh, it was a bit of a uh, homecoming when Phillips' sons returned one the, one the family heirloom the from the United the States. Where they did the drilling. It's also really exciting that it was a bit of luck, really, you know, the core being returned to us from America just happened to coincide with some geological work that was already taking place. Geologists trace the 20-ton giants to Westwoods, an area 15 miles north of Stonehenge. They're pretty much some of the largest sarsen stones in the whole of southern Britain. So it seems that the people who were building Stonehenge were selecting deliberately large stones. Why not build Stonehenge where they quarried the stones? Why move them so far? That's a really good question and not one that we can really answer at the moment, um, other than to say that really Stonehenge and the whole landscape around it, which is chock full of lots of other prehistoric monuments, must have been significant. What possibly could be significant about this corner of Britain? I think it's always going to be slightly out of our grasp. I think we're taking tiny steps towards that all the time, but I, I think there'll always be something of a, a mystery about exactly why. An ancient mystery that keeps the magic of Stonehenge alive. For CBS This Morning, Ian Lee in London. A little bit of that mystery solved now after 4,500 years. Thank you, Ian.